panelists here in studio. We have Mahiri Zaja. She is the former vice chair of the IABC. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. Good morning. We have Edwin Sifuna, the secretary general of ODM. Welcome back. Thank you. And we have uh, Dr. Pamela Diambo, the woman representative for Migori County. Welcome back to the show. Good morning, Kenya, and thank you. And we'll shortly be joined by Gladwell, um, Gladwell Cheriot, who is uh, the member of parliament from Baringo County. She's the woman representative there. Once she's able to join us here, we'll bring her on board for this conversation. But I want us to begin uh, from that finding by the High Court. There is actually a clip that um, uh, the petitioner spoke about while in court. But uh, let me begin with you, um, Vice Chair, former Vice Chair. When the High Court extends the deadline or stops the expiry of the deadline uh, for registration of voters, it was supposed to end today. We've seen just over 1 million new registered voters against a target of 6 million. IBC has complained that you don't have the resources to extend this. Now, what happens? What would IBC do at such a time? They have no resources, but there's a court order. Thank you for the uh, question, and it's been quite a concern for everyone that the voter registration was coming to a close and yet the target uh, has been missed by almost 4.8 million uh, voters. This means that uh, IEBC must comply with the court order and continue with the registration exercise, no matter what, mm -hmm. until that date of 9th uh, November, when the matter will be heard. So I think they do not have a choice but to continue they must spread out their resources, ensure that the listing continues. And uh, of course, they may not get that target they initially uh, had set of 6 million. Uh, we can see that it's quite at all a tall order for now. Mm -hmm. But they must continue with registration because remember, even the Constitution gives them a mandate of continuous voter registration, uh, which has also been uh, curtailed over the past few uh, years because of funding. Mm -hmm. And let's first listen to the petitioner and his advocate as they spoke just after the ruling in the High Court in Eldred. Listen. I'm happy that uh, at least the court has been kind enough uh, to give a prohibitory order against IBC not to close its exercise of mass voter registration that was due to end tomorrow. The court has been able to extend that exercise for the next uh, seven days until 9th of November 2021, when we'll be required to come back after serving all the parties concerned. I'm so happy and uh, so that everybody who felt aggrieved by the government's successive elective leaders who are not elected or you didn't like, go and register as a voter so that when you complain that you didn't get a good leader, it's you who voted. Don't say, I didn't vote. So you have time to vote now. Please take this opportunity and vote and take your voters' registration. Speaking there is Patrick Cherono, the petitioner in that matter, and his advocate earlier on. But uh, again, come back to you, um, former vice chair, because yes, you're saying that IBC has no choice but to continue. But how do they do it? They say they don't have resources. You need resources to keep the registration clerks on the ground. Yeah, I think it is uh, quite a challenge that they need to continue the listing, yet they have been uh, working on very, in fact, even they are working on a tight budget. But I think they just must uh, go back to the Treasury and ask for funds immediately to be disbursed to them mm -hmm. so that they can uh, continue. They cannot, uh, they cannot stop because the court has said they continue until that date when the matter will be heard. Mm -hmm. And SG Sifuna, when you look at this, I mean, it's been 30 days that Kenyans have had an opportunity to go register. The statistics that we got after the three weeks of registration are just over 800,000 new voters registered. By that time, the target was 4.5 million. And now we hear it could have gone up to about 1.1 million by Sunday against the target of 6 million. So is it a question of voter apathy or no sufficient time for people to register? And is this best addressed at the courts or are there better mechanisms? Yeah, I don't think it is a question of uh, time. 
uh, Sam. Uh, I have interacted with this voter registration exercise. My uh, member of parliament from Migori will attest to this. Mm -hmm. There is very serious apathy, uh, especially amongst the young people. Uh, and two, uh, you know, responses have come up from time to time when we speak to these young people as to why they don't want to register. The first one is uh, that they don't feel like their vote is going to count. Uh, and the second one, of course, is uh, a disillusionment with the performance of the people who they elected in the first place. Mm -hmm. This they have heard from other people. So the challenge is actually on IABC to try and work on uh, uh, public confidence in the electoral system in this country. Because it doesn't matter if people don't feel like their vote is going to count. It doesn't matter if you open the exercise for a year. Uh, I can assure you that if we dealt with the question of uh, co public confidence in the voting uh, process in this country, you would not even need a week. Everybody would be civically uh, motivated to just go and register. I don't even know how practical this uh, order is. Because uh, when you sit and uh, uh, talk to these IABC officials, you talk to your county RO, we have gone around this city, for instance, and there are places where the kit just sits there for a day and nobody shows up to register. Mm -hmm. I visited uh, Komarok Ward, for instance, and they were telling me sometimes you register two people in a period of uh, 12 hours. You just seated out there. So uh, I would like to see that advocate and uh, that petitioner uh, follow up that civic, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, enthusiasm that they have displayed by going to court by now showing us uh, them lining up people to <laughs> register because mm -hmm. really you are just going to to uh, uh, keep the clerks seated there and nobody's going to show up to register mm -hmm. it's a very curious thing and we have had discussions even with the chair of the IBC there requires to also be greater synergy between the political class and the IABC because the mobilizing power, unfortunately, is not with the commission. Mm -hmm. The mobilizing power is with Pamela Odiambo and other people in, in the political players. I can tell you some. If mm -hmm. you send a kid somewhere there, uh, here, you say in the Great North, you put it at uh, a school here, mm -hmm. and you tell people that Pamela Odiambo is going to be there to supervise the supervise the registration mm -hmm. you will see people showing up if they hear that sifuna is going to be there they will show up because they, 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 there is a certain power that mm -hmm. comes with uh, being an elected official as opposed to just the electoral staff from from the commission it's all going to work mm -hmm. we have encouraged ibc you need to have closer col co collaboration with the political class especially in things like this voter registration because the mobilizing power is with, is with the political class right and I, there's a clip that um the chair of budget at the national assembly spoke about um extension and resources listen to kanini kega we don't have enough funds to have an extension. And I don't see from where I sit as the chairman of budget, I don't see us appropriating more funds for an extension. Maybe next year, early next year, there could be another window of uh, second uh, enhanced uh, voter registration. But for now, we want to beseech Kenyans. We have two days, you know. You can utilize those two days to make sure that you register as a voter. All right, and Kanini Kego was speaking over the weekend. He was referring to the two days being yesterday and today. Of course, now the High Court says that uh, uh, this will continue um, at least until 9th of November when the matter will be mentioned. But, uh, Dr. Pamela, when you look at this predicament of um, IABC, talking of resources, there is the chair of the budget committee saying that you don't have those resources because there are so many things to be financed. This is the final year of President Kenyatta is looking at his legacy projects. So how, what, what in your view is the best solution out of this, knowing that, as Kega says, there could be a possibility of another vote registration next year? Um, thank you very much, Sam. This case of uh, voter registration uh, calls for a lot of uh, soul searching in uh, our country. Uh, much as the budget chair committee chair has said there is no resources. But I think it is important mm -hmm. to have us all think that all government projects should be funded. Mm -hmm. And whatever is important to the public, like this one, should actually be funded. So I believe uh, the Treasury might have no otherwise, but to try and uh, come around and see if there is any money that can be used actually to sustain these people in the field because i am aware given a county like migori county where i uh, which i represent 
um, these guys sit at the sub-county headquarter. Some of the sub-counties are so wide and vast. And so even as little as getting just sacrifice mm -hmm. as Kenyans for Kenyans, uh, I think that's important. But uh, the case of timing again, allow me to agree with my senior here, SG Sifuna. Um, I think what Kenyans are lacking, why we are talking about such kind of shameful scenario of uh, targeting six million. I'm imagining that our officers know that these six million are people who have been, who have attained the age of 18 uh -huh. since 2017. And if these people are in Kenya, then the question is, where are they? Because like in my case, I was telling you a few minutes ago off the cuff that I attempted to partner with the IBC twice this year in my county mm -hmm. on the 26th to 4th <coughs> of 26th April to 4th of May. I led a drive in Migori County to register people. Yes, we did some good work, but the, the numbers were still very little. Then from 2nd of August <coughs> to 13th of August again this year, I led this kind of initiative in Migori County and the IBC people were very good. So long as there was some little fare to take them where I wanted them, mm -hmm. they actually went. But people would still not come out in a, in a hurry. And when you talk to our people, what comes clear to me? is that Kenyans no longer know why it is beneficial for them to be voters and come out and vote. So this borders on uh, the issue of uh, mishandled elections, as people think. Sometimes even when you elect Pamela, mm -hmm. the IBC would give the, the ticket to Shifona, or it would not be fair, and there are so many things. And therefore, uh, that issue of restoring the confidence of the people and thoroughly showing Kenyans how is it beneficial to me as a citizen to vote. I think this is where we are failing. Something else that I would like us to consider going forward. Supposing we created a system where when our young people come registering for IDs, we can actually enlist them as voters. Because definitely, if you have given me this particular ID serial number, then that number will not be allocated to somebody else. So I, if, I, if, I, if we I can... have had that proposal for a very long time, yes. including people saying that, why do you have to do registration two times? But why are we not doing it? Why are we not effecting it through the laws? That, that is the, 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 the question. I, I don't know really You're why. You're in Parliament. Well, maybe we can suggest it and have amendments in parliaments to, to make it work. And, and that's why even when we were talking about issues of Oduma card and those kind of things, some form of identification that gives you access to everything and gives you the qualification to participate in everything. To me, it is important because somebody has registered, like some of these our young students, they have registered to take their ID in Migori. And then they are now at Nairobi University. Mm -hmm. So you want them to travel all the way to Migori just to register as a voter. Well, I know this particular uh, time we had petitioned the IBC and we discussed with their commissioners that they would raise uh, some sort of Duma Center in our major universities and so that they can capture people. Even if I come from Quisero, for example, mm -hmm. I would still uh, tell them what my polling station there is and I would be registered. I think we need to find a way of combining some of these important uh, exercises, okay. like issuing that ID with uh, uh, an enlisted uh, enlisting myself as, as a voter, okay. uh, then it would ease uh, the, the scenario. Oh, all right, Dr. Again, Pamela. Again, okay. like now, I, allow me to suggest that going forward, uh, as Sifuna puts it, I wish all of us who are leaders who know why our people should vote, maybe we could still go ahead and partner with our people okay. and try to make sure that the, the registration go on. Oh, but I right. wouldn't want it to be another legal tussle okay. that will not yield really results mm -hmm. as, as, as I'm ima imagining. Because just extending the time and people are not willing to come out and, and, and register, to me, again, that does not make sense. And it's not the only hurdle that IABC is dealing with. They're also dealing with challenges to their decisions on uh, procurement. We know that uh, last week they were expected to uh, sign a 
a framework agreement with a, a firm that was to publish or to print, not publish, to print ballot papers for the general election, including several statutory reforms. It's a Greece uh, firm, but now there has been challenges to that uh, decision or the communication that was made to the various bidders, including an, a petition by Tall Security Print Limited. There's another one by Al Gurea, the one that um, uh, printed the ballot papers in 2017, and there's another one by Africa Infrastructure Development Company, all of which uh, were bidders in that um, tender for the ballot papers. Now that sort of stalls. There has been a, an order by the Public uh, Procurement Administrative Review Board. And let me begin with you again, Mahiri Zaja. If these challenges continue, then how much can IABC I mean, what room do they have to wiggle, knowing the challenges that happened in 2017, including a challenge on the printing of ballot papers for the presidential election up until the last month? Yeah, quite a, a huge problem. Uh, we can see they are coming. Uh, the, the procurement uh, review board uh, uh, overturned or rather annulled that tender. Mm -hmm. And we have seen in the news that uh, the High Court has also overturned Mm -hmm. that ruling of the review board uh, on the so, elections technology yes on the elections technology mm -hmm. so again we are going to see a scenario where there is a back and forth remember this is the time ibc needs to do procurement early so that they do not have delays which impact on their work as we move ahead to 9th of august 2022 mm -hmm. but i think uh more so is to say that uh we should recognize that uh, when they are doing procurement, they prioritize what we call the strategic materials. These are the strategic materials because they are non-strategic materials which come later, the stationery that is used in the polling stations. But now they have to deal with these major uh, infrastructure uh, which enable them to manage the elections effectively. So we are going to see a situation where there are delays, there is a back and forth, because remember, these are commercial people. The people who do these uh, printing of ballot papers and uh, all these, uh, they sell the uh, elections uh, technology, are commercial people. They want to make their money. So it's a war. In fact, during my time, I remember our chairman saying, now the hyenas are in town, because the, the, the sums that are involved are colossal. Mm -hmm. This four billion, you know, it's not small money. We are talking big time money. And these have to be procured uh, in a timely fashion. They have to be procured early enough so that you give, this, there has to be a lead time mm -hmm. for the electoral commission. What was the best time to have been done with all these framework agreements? We are now already months into the election. Nine, it should have been done nine. way, you know, um, way a year way before, before that. Mm -hmm. Maybe two years before the election, so that there is enough time now for IBC to concentrate on the other. Remember, there are other administrative things they must do. And again, there are statutory timelines that set in as we move towards uh, 9th of August. Mm -hmm. So I think if we, we talk about two years is good lead time so that they can have enough time to put out those open tenders because remember they put out open tenders and these are international tenders. Mm -hmm. They are not mm -hmm. local. So they invite people from all over the world who can deliver on this uh, very delicate uh, supply of uh, electoral materials. Oh, all right, and I want to introduce uh, Gladwell Cheriot, the member of parliament for Baringo County. She's a woman representative, uh, representative there. Welcome to the show. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about IBC hurdles that they are facing, including yesterday's um, ruling by the High Court in Eldred uh, saying that the voter registration has to continue. Um, I don't know how well your county has been doing in terms of the voter registration. Let me just check it out. Baringo County, uh, you have registered where is, where is it let me yes you had registered 14,998 by the third week I'll shortly be looking at what the target was but what's your comment in regards to these developments at a time that IBC continues to say we have no resources to really extend the time then like as just Funa said earlier there's the question of voter apathy uh, thank you so much, and uh, sorry, uh, I was caught up on the road by the jam. Of course, Mombasa Road, as usual. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, let me put my comment and say uh, the turn-up is so poor. 
very very poor very low in Kane county it is led by uh, Tiati county mm -hmm. which is on the lead but doesn't mean that uh, um, the nobody can go to court and really challenge uh, IBC for taking up is, somebody is, who has is, taken is, is an see, identity. Honorable Cherry, for you to register a voter, you appear at a voter registration center. Yes. Your biometrics are taken. Your face ID is taken. Just like the identity card. Yes, that, yes, that's what I'm saying. Yes. So why don't you suggest a law that makes sure, because when you're registering for an ID, I don't think they get your biometrics on... Uh, are they, they do. Are they scanned or, they, or they're just... They do everything. Are they scanned? They do. Well, and this are currently they, they are they scanned? They, they are scanned later. Digital. Well, they yes. that, that, that's what I'm saying, because when I was registering for my ID, mm -hmm. the, you use the ink and then the impression the on a paper yes. mm -hmm. to be scanned later, mm -hmm. but yes. for IBC, they're they are scanned on a biometric machine. Yes. So why don't you propose, um, I mean, an amendment to make it possible so that the registration through, from the ID is also a registration to be a voter in a, in a format that IBC can use. Actually, that's a challenge to us, us as a house, and it's something that we need to take it up as it up. Can, I, can I help but some? Apart from that, uh, uh, can, can I, I finish? just finish? I, yeah. uh, let her finish, then you can. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying as, I'm, as, as a legislator, I mm -hmm. take it as a challenge, and it's something that is workable. Even, even if we are not going to amend to use it now, mm -hmm. I mean, we have a perpetual life. We can still use it uh, in the next uh, voter time mm -hmm. or next registration time. Okay. And 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 let me let me put it like this: we have a number of our young people. I, I can't ex estimate the, the the number that came out of school, who at who already have IDs. Mm -hmm. And our young people, uh, many of them, they are they they they, they vote for us through social media. <laughs> And which is good, and we feel good. <laughs> but then we want to inform our young people that this is not what will uh, be used during the uh, elections 2022. Mm -hmm. So that they show, they go ahead and get a, a voter registration card mm -hmm. so that they become registered because they cannot make a decision that when that time comes. Mm -hmm. Their time is now between now and the day that the ballot box will be brought. Mm -hmm. So, so, so they, they can make a decision on card, social media. Even if they love Gladwell Chariot and they really propose me left, right, center, WhatsApp, Facebook, it's everywhere. We, they won't vote for me. Okay. So this is the generation actually that we need to target uh -huh. and tell them the importance. All right. Yes. SJ Sifuni, you wanted to say something about that question yeah, of I know, I know uh, it on good authority that in fact during the Grand Coalition government, mm -hmm. there was a, a similar project uh, to institute these sort of changes that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Some, whenever something makes sense to you, but you don't understand why it is being done, it's deliberate. You know, voting in this country is a very emotive subject. Number one, even this question of identi identity card issuance, mm -hmm. there has been deliberate government efforts from uh, previous regimes to suppress even registration of voters in certain areas. I come from what is essentially a border county, and uh, Madam Pamela Carlos. How does the government do that? Well, I'm going to eat. I'll, I'll explain it to you. Mm -hmm. Uh, let me give you the, the, the most recent example. Do you know, Sam, that there are 10,000 uh, young people who come from Garissa County who have to go through security vetting for them to be issued with the ID cards? Mm -hmm. It's the same problem we have in border counties like Migori. Yes. If you come to Bungoma, to Busia, you will find those problems. There is dozens and dozens of women who mm -hmm. are married to you know people from that region that do not have identity cards, they, they still use their husband's IDs. Even if you wanted to register them for M-Pesa, you couldn't. So there has been deliberate government stalling of she registration and issuance. Yes. She will tell you. <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, these, are, these are things that are known. Uh -huh. Now, the other issue, uh, Sam, is that even as we speak today, voting in this country is still voluntary. That is why you can't force people. You can't force them to, to register and you can't vote them, uh, force them to come to vote. Mm -hmm. uh, if we have to progress this question, because for me, <coughs> I really feel like the decision on who leads this country has to be made by all of us. Mm -hmm. If uh, I have my way, for instance, as Sifuna, we should move away from this voluntary voting to mandatory mm -hmm. voting. In fact, when you interact with these voters, Sam, you know, these members don't want to tell you. It is very expensive for uh, Madam Pamela Odiambo to mobilize votes. You can spend almost 300 shillings to register just one person mm. per capita. 
And I'm telling you, these same people that you have to follow into the houses to come out to register, if you don't do the same on election day, they still will not vote. So that is money to mobilize. I have been in by-elections where you come into a polling station and you see a crowd of young people just chilling. They say they are chilling. Then mm -hmm. you ask them, have you guys voted? They say no. What are you waiting for? We're waiting for you. <laughs> We're waiting for you to be pushed. Yes, they, they, they want to be mobilized <laughs> to, to move into the, into the police station. <laughs> and these are things that everybody knows. It is very expensive. So for me, really, I have faced so much frustration even in these by-elections. Uh -huh. I would love to see a, a, a situation where, like for instance, in Western Kenya, you know, human beings are motivated by only two things. Mm -hmm. It is pain and pleasure. I would like to see a situation where, after election day in future, that register of voters is given to the police so that if you have not voted, <laughs> we sentence you to maybe community, uh, community uh, service no, for no, 30 no, days. No, no, no. Because really, no, 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 this no, other, no, this no, other no, motivation no, is no, no, too expensive. <laughs> would, would that be a democracy, really? No, no, this is no, what no, I'm no, saying, no. Sam, because uh -huh. it's a civic democracy. duty. It's a civic duty. Some, okay. You have to no, feel no, that responsibility. Some... And it's not that we are sentencing you to, to jail. We just uh -huh. give you community service of 30 days slashing grass because you have, hey, you have abdicated your civic responsibility to vote. But some may feel disappointed by the leadership, which I think one of the panelists said he, yeah, that no, here. No, no, no. I need us to take a short break. But Dr. Pamela, the, you had a burning issue that yes, you wanted yes. to... Yes, yes. I, I thought I just wanted something to this idea of uh, trying to combine uh, different services. Mm -hmm. You know, we are talking about this form, which they even still use to some extent today to register people mm -hmm. for IDs. Mm -hmm. But this is also a nation where, for a long time, We've been talking about technology.com and all these kind of things. So who said when uh, the people, the, the registrars of uh, persons' IDs cannot use the same biometric, uh, the same gadget that the IBC is using, is it possible that we can have this same one uh, to take my biometric uh, data and uh, register me as a, give me an ID and the same information used to make me a voter? I think uh, some, sometimes I get disappointed in our country. Uh, we, we, we want to see a lot of impossibilities, mm -hmm. even when there is none. So it is high time we upgraded all our systems so that if we are moving technology, let that technology be everywhere. Can you, can you then commit to, if, if indeed those suggestions are saying are pretty important for this country, can you commit to propose them before? Sure. You, you're still I in would. parliament. We are still in parliament, that's why we have said, According to me, uh, we also have to admit that, that, that not everything must be in the law. There are just yeah, some things which are common sense. Okay. Really, why must everything this, be in the uh, law? Sam, yes. uh, with due respect to what Mwishimiwa yes. uh, Pamela is saying, mm -hmm. it's not a new thing. It's been there for many years. It's mm -hmm. been a project of the government uh, since 2004. And I remember I was even in the inaugural committee that suggested that Kenyans should have an IPRS, that is an Integrated mm. Population Registration System. At that time, we just realized that not all the registration systems were at par. But I think today we have come uh, to a place where everybody, every institution in government mm -hmm. is using technology to a very, very large extent. So that proposal is possible and should be moved forward. Either through this Huduma number, it can be made workable so that as you are enlisting for that Huduma number, it is also known you're going to be registered as a voter. And in that way, we shall be saving funds instead of waiting for this last minute to say that let us do an enhanced voter mm -hmm. registration. Now we do not have funds and we are thinking of a second phase next year too close to the elections. So I think these are things that are doable okay. and you as parliamentarians can carry that and ensure Huduma number is put to a level where, you know, like internationally, it can work for everybody. You know, voter registration and voting in Kenya is voluntary, as uh, Sifuna has said. So you are not going to force people to, to register vote. as voters and to vote, because what are they going to get? We have had it mm. all. The young people are so disillusioned. They don't see what they're getting from their leaders. And mm. you're here uh, with due respect as our leaders. What do we get? Mm -hmm. At the end of the year, uh, of the electoral cycle, we are looking at a scorecard. How, how has Pamela performed? How has Cheruyot performed? Mm -hmm. And then we are so disillusioned. The young people are saying, we do not have jobs. We do not have, you know, any hope for the future. They are looking at their chiefs at home. They are holding IDs. You want your ID? Toa kitu kidogo hapa. You know, they are also impeding this process. Mm. So where, where do they run to? They do not have anywhere to run to. And this is why 
people are so demotivated and something needs to be done to change this scenario. That's something that needs to no, be no, done. Dr. Pamela, we need to take a break at that point.